It is free, open, and inclusive, where anyone can come and no one is turned away. Anyone with a stake in the region can air your views. All we ask is that you do constructively. So thank you for joining us, both here and online. My staff tells me that there are over 200 people all together today. So I'm excited to see uh, familiar faces, old friends and new friends. As stakeholders, we have an important mission to work together. You know, one of the job of the a river basin organization such as the MRC is to report on what's happening in the basin. So you have heard me and us, uh, as including during the last Stay in the Basin report uh, last April, and also through my meetings with leaders and peoples of the Mekong, to draw your attention to the plight and the challenges of the basin. Climate change, hydropower development and management, declining fishery resources, frequent floods and drought. But today, we will not just report, but we want to engage with you on three ways we can take actions. First, on hydropower development. Guided by scientific knowledge and evidence, the MRCS will support member countries to implement the newly approved sustainable hydropower strategy. And for the first time, we will embark on work that would look at information sharing and better coordination of water infrastructure projects, including cascade dams. This mechanism will be essential for the management of both power production, but also related purposes of environment, flood and drought and disaster. So stay tuned for information about uh, pilot projects that we are launching. On a related note, the MRC and the LMC, Lansang Mekong Corporation, uh, including China, are working on a joint study on the changing flow regime of the Mekong Lansang River Basin which will contribute definitely to implementation of the sustainable hydropower strategy. This is not just another study, but it is a necessary study in an age where divergent perspectives on the conditions and the causes of those conditions of the changing basin that different stakeholders have. Up on the joint study approval, and may I say, for the first time, both under the MRC framework of four member states and under the LMC framework of six member states, we are now working on this study. So it is a historic study. And today, we will engage with stakeholders in both launching the study, but also to take your recommendation, your views into account how we move forward. Second, on flood and drought. You know, the MRC flood and drought services rely on several tools to communicate both the river conditions, but also to forecast what's ahead. 
and we partner with leading agencies and institutes to ensure that our tools are as accurate as possible and to ensure that this information reach the member countries and the right stakeholders. However, we notice that there are gaps in what the MRC put out and what the stakeholders receive. So we want to discuss with you today about how to strengthen this connection because the information that we produce is only useful when they're used. Third, on fisheries. We know how important fisheries are to the basin, to the livelihoods of the people. We know that fishery resources, especially wild fisheries, are under stress. So building on our monitoring work and our work to improve the various structures, especially hydropower dams and irrigation dams, including fish paths, we are now embarking on a work that would try to draw funds uh, from global funds to benefiting directly the most vulnerable people, especially due to declining fishery resources. So we would like to engage with you on critical areas of fish habitats. Uh, we would like to discuss with you what are critical activities that would help bring value and um, significance in terms of helping communities adapt. And we would like to work with you on charting a way forward that is sustainable and resilient. So I look forward to your advice. I look forward to working together uh, on, on these three important activities. So colleagues and friends, welcome again. And uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being with us. And thank you for keeping engaged with the Mekong River Commission. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Nalak, for providing the welcome remark, highlighting the number of challenges we have and what we are going to discuss. Most importantly, highlighting the, uh, the key activity that the Commission is doing to address those challenges in partner with, with, you know, with our partner across the basin and beyond the basin. Um, to move forward, um, we have the honor of Mr. Sarawut Chiva Prasert, who is the Deputy Sec uh, Secretary General of the Office of Nat uh, Natural and Water Resources, who will provide the opening remark. May I please invite you, Mr. Sarawut, to the stage. Member of MRC Joint Committee, CEO of MRCS, honors participants, colleagues, and friends. Good morning. Uh, on behalf of Office of the National Water Resource, I wish to warmly welcome all of you to Bangkok, Thailand. We were uh, hosting the 12 regional stakeholder forums. Today, we will focus on addressing critical climate and develop, development challenges in the Mekong River Basin. Thailand support the developments that are environmentally friendly and economical responsibility responsible Thailand is committed to 
responsible development in the basin as recognized in the agreement on the cooperation for the sustainable development of the Mekong Basin or 1995 agreement we also strongly support the implementation of the sustainable hydropower development strategy which was approved at the 28th MRC Council meeting last year. We believe that the SSDS let's present the step forward in moving the basin development towards outcome that can address long-term need and the future sustainable of hydropower development by providing the framework to avoid minimize and mitigate the task boundary impact I would like to state that the implementation of SSDS is everyone's responsibility whether it is the MRC MRC Secretariat National Mekong Committee Secretariat Responsible National Issue Agency Developer as well as Concerned Stakeholder We was have know that better information sharing is Im important for the protection of of, of life, livelihood, poverty, and aquatic. I am glad to see that this is happening as the SSDS will provide appropriate opportunity for the MRC to work with member countries and upper Mekong countries on better data and information sharing and coordination for the hydropower project operation I also look forward to witness the official launch of joint study between MRC and LMC Water Center the study will will touch the confidence among the riparian country involved I will also bring the better understanding of changing hydrological condition in the Ranchang Mekong River Basin Thailand strongly support the study and ready to share needle data Thailand also expect that by the end of the year we will complete the first the first phase and the practical adaptation adaptation strategy such a better notification will be agreed and institu institutional besides sharing data and information we need to as one our knowledge and cutting edge technology to 
to monitor, monitor the river particularly enchanting our flood and down service this is to ensure that the most useful and most reliable information can be provided to member country to form, formulate the, the, the best possible, possible discussion, discussion and take the opportunity action which is have the direct impact to livelihood of the people in the Mekong. The forum today will be the place to seek stakeholder feedback to the to on what on what must be done now to as one to to advise to MRC front and down service last week a great a giant stingray was found in uh, Cambodia this is the heaviest fish water fresh water the record baking is really big so that the richness by all they were they were velocity of the Mekong River although the discovery is good new officially and test tested <coughs> by the Y array of fish pressure especially for infrastructure development and climate change therefore conservation effect is critical especially in terms of rapid development this bit the fact that hydropower brought a great deal of wealth of country economy. Thailand recognized that I would have it would it could have transboundary impact and result of the continuous loss of fishery and uh, require proper mechanism to protect critical habitats of key fish in order to maintain the food security and livelihood for more 70 million in Mekong Basin your expertise and feedback on this issue do, be, do matter it gives the case pressure to see government agency development partner hydropower developer, civil society and academy and another concerned organization from the Mekong and another agency get together here and online to discuss impact topic of the forum on behalf of Thai 
government and the MRC. We are have to li li listen to your will and discussion, and would like to encourage on of your here to act actively, actively encourage and provide constructive input. I would like to declare the regional consultation open and con contently look forward to the discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Sarawat, for providing your welcome remark, your opening remark highlighting Thailand's commitment to responsible development in the basin. Um, here, um, thank you so much also for underscoring these, uh, the different challenges that must be addressed jointly by, by the Commission and different partners. Um, and also for inviting you know, constructive feedback and comment from the floor and as well as those joining us online today. Um, next, um, we have our honorable guest um, joining us from Beijing, Mr. Hao Zhao, who is the Secretary General of the Lanchang Mekong Water Resource Corporation Center, who is today, um, will be providing us a special um, remarks um, from China. So please, Mr. Hao Zhao, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you, please. Okay. Um, dear Mr. Sarawu Chewa Prasa, Deputy Secretary General National Office of the Natural and Water Resources of Thailand. Dear Dr. Analog Kidhong, uh, Chief Executive Officer of Mekong River Commission Secretariat, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm pleased to be invited to participate in the 12th Regional Stakeholder Forum and the launching ceremony of the joint study between Lanzhou Mekong Corporation Water Center and MRCS. Virtually. I would like to thank, take this opportunity to thank the colleagues from the MRCS for their efforts to organize this important event, addressing critical climate change and development challenges in the Mekong River Basin, and show the progress of the research on the changing patterns of the hydrological conditions of the Lanzhou Mekong River Basin and adaptation strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, Lantau Mekong River, as one of the largest rivers in the world, has not only brought rich natural resources, but also valuable cooperation opportunities for the repairing countries. As we all know, launch of the Lantau Mekong Corporation has been motivated by this river. Drinking water from the river, the Lantau Mekong Corporation countries are as close as one family. As many of you are aware, the Lantau Mekong Corporation Water Center has been established in China according to Lantau Mekong Corporation leaders' decision in 2016 and serves as a black corporation platform. The center works under the guidance of the Joint Working Group for Lantau Mekong Water Resources Corporation and perform secretarial functions and provide substantial technical support for the Joint Working Group in the preparation and organization of official meetings and various activities. In the past five years since the establishment, we have witnessed much more clear direction of cooperation and enhanced relationship among the six member countries. Significant progress has been made regarding information sharing which involves the provision of the all year round upstream hydrological data from China to the MRC and other member countries, as well as urgent notification of significant variations of the water flow in the river course. Major events, such as the second Lansang Lake Water Resource Corporate Forum, were successfully held, for which my sincere thanks goes to the MRCS for the excellent speech and presentation, 
which added great richness to the forum. By implementing a series of pragmatic cooperation projects focused on rural water supply safety, dam safety, integrated management of small water heads, among others, the center endeavored to solve water-related problems in the relevant areas and improve people's livelihood and well-being for the implementation of water-related SDGs. Great importance was also attached to developing broader partnership. The network of partners is expanding and the cooperation between the Lanzar Mekong Corporate Water Center and the MRCS is advancing based on the MOU signed by the two organizations in 2019. In addition to the MRCS, we have developed an extended cooperative relationship with international organizations such as UNICEF, Global Water Partnership, EMI, UNDP, World Bank, ADPC, and Asia Water Council to pull available resources and bring more benefits to the basin. In fact, many of them have representatives sitting in this today's forum online. Ladies and gentlemen, the Beijing recommendations adopted by the second Lanzar Mekong Water Resources Corporate Forum in December 2021 have stressed that the Lanzar Mekong countries are facing challenges such as increasing demand for water resources, frequent occurrence of floods and droughts, aquatic ecosystem degradation, aggravating pollution, and uncertainties brought about by climate change. These have enabled the preparing countries to raise awareness of cooperation and the drawing hands to find out a new path of rational and sustainable utilization of water for solving and responding to difficulties and the challenges for the basin development. The topics of today's forum, namely sustainable hydropower development, transboundary fish management, and the flood and drought services, have vividly showcased the efforts. That is also the driving force of the joint study between the Lanzar Mekong Water Center and MRCS. Bearing all those challenges in our minds, we hope to find out the evidence of the climate change on water governance and put forward corresponding recommendations on adaptation by mobilizing equities from all repairing countries Based on the previous cooperative activities on evaluation of results of emergency water release and so on. And this joint study, as what Dr. Analog has mentioned, is not just another pure scientific task. It is also targeting our mutual sharing of hydrological and meteorological data, models, and other knowledge, and information sharing is critical for the success of the study and the river management, which is echoed by our dear colleague from Thailand with a confirmation of the active participation of the joint study. We sincerely trust that by launching the joint study at this important forum organized by the MRCS, where policymakers, researchers, diplomats, and civil society come together in partnership we can promote coordination and cooperation across the river basin, taking joint and concerted actions to deal with floods, droughts, and other adverse impacts caused by climate change and human activities, and addressing water-related issues of common concern. Today, in this virtual conference room, I recognize some familiar names of the participants from governments, the private sector, and other stakeholders. We have all worked tirelessly on the provision of better well-being for the repairing citizens. So, your valuable comments and inputs are welcome to accelerate the exchange of ideas and the scaling up of some practice. Distinguished participants, I would like also to inform you that the center is drafting the new five-year action plan on water resources cooperation from 2023 to 2028 at the request of the Joint Working Group. 
Thereby, I invite all of you to share your ideas and thoughts on priority areas of cooperation, proposed activities and project concepts, <coughs> etc. in the next space. It's my strong belief that with joint efforts, we will achieve excellent results in many cooperative areas, especially in terms of the information sharing, the joint study, and ultimately the integrated water resource management and the sustainable development of the basin. We appreciate that MRC has endeavored to promote the sustainable management, development, and protection of water and other resources in the Lower Mekong River over the past years. I trust that our close cooperation will sincerely increase synergies between our center and MRC and bring more benefits for the six repairing countries and people living along the river. Last but not least, I expect this forum will gather wisdom, enhance consensus, and promote cooperation so as to make all achievements better benefit people of all member countries and contribute to make the Lansom Mekong River as a river of friendship, cooperation, and prosperity. I wish this forum um, a great success and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Hao Zhao, for providing your special remark highlighting the LMC Water Center commitment to working with the MRC as well as other partners in the regions. Most importantly, for highlighting the strategic importance of the joint study that is currently conducted by the MRC and the LMC Water Center, and also announce some of the news that is uh, happening next year. Um, okay, now is my time. I got some questions for you, ladies and gentlemen. That very big question is, why are we all here? Is it for workshop or workshop? Walk and shop or both? Okay, just kidding, but probably also true. Um, now, this day, you know, we, we got news from different sources like newspaper or social media. Um, in, in, recent in recent time, as you pick some news to read about the Mekong River, what have you seen or what come to your minds or what people talk about it often? Anyone? What would come to your mind or what, what do you see often? Is that, like Mr. Sarwood was mentioning the past, Two weeks ago, a giant stingray that was discovered twice in a stem train. The world number one now breaking that record or something else. Okay, I don't see any hand. Maybe somebody can share. Okay. Or probably some flood and drought. Right. Did you know, but of course I think you know, that um, over the last four plus years, basically the water flow during the wet season has been on average 50% lower. This also was highlighted during the, uh, uh, the CEO uh, Mekong address in, in uh, uh, April. But at least, you see, we have experienced this low flow over the last three, four years. And the wet season itself um, has shrunk from five months to now only four months, July to October. But then there is also good news that this year the water level has been um, very high already during the first six months of the year with a lot of rain by about 40 to 60 percent more than average so this is also good news and the bad news and also that at the Tung during 2020 and 2021 the pattern of water level uh, was the lowest um, ever recorded 
basically down during our six years of record. And also, MRC monitoring suggests that um, the drier years from 2019 to 2021 led to 35% uh, lower fish catch than normal. So what does that mean for the, the fishing community and for the people who depend on you know, these uh, uh, fish, fishery resources for their livelihood and also for us, you know, our daily consumption. How many of us in this room are eating fish or consume fish for your daily meal? Can you raise your hand? Fish, eating fish, right? Okay, at least more than half of the room, like having fish. So fish is now a, a very critical, important uh, issue. But meanwhile, the basin is also under attack by climate change, as we have seen. Okay, there's also rapid development that is happening, you know, um, throughout the basin. According to IPCC, you see Asia will face a stronger monsoon and flooding in the coming decades because the global temperature will keep increasing unless we cap it, we keep it to one degree Celsius. And of all the rec recorded disaster in ASEAN since 2012, flood constitute approximately 63%, while drought score about 2%, but, but this number has probably been changing now over the last couple of years because of the degree of the uh, and intensity of the droughts. And this picture is a show is uh, during a flash flood in Cambodia, one of the provinces. And as we see in terms of figure, the Secretariat has done this uh, review, desk review, to look at the impact of flood and drought. We've seen that at least 3 million people are affected annually by flood. And about 90 million worth of damage caused by flood during normal years. But then during extreme years, this lead up to more than $300 million worth of damages. Is that a lot or is that just a tiny figure? Okay. Also in the basin, there is also rapid development, you know, energy sector, hydropower development, uh, water resource development that is now happening. There are dams, there are irrigation, but with different developer, for example. So what is happening? So some thought maybe we can consider and and and. And this forum will, will try to address the issue that I've raised today, uh, uh, just now, to see what would be the future of the Mekong River and how we want it to be. How are we going to coordinate the flow of information from upstream to downstream and vice versa uh, with different developers of dams and different, with diff and in different countries? Do we still have time to protect our fisheries resources? If we can't protect them all, can we choose some places to do that? Or can we just protect certain species? What should we do? Are we doing enough and timely enough to protect vulnerable communities from the risk of flood and drought? Or have we prepared them to face the disaster that are being predicted, for example, by IPCC? Are we doing this all enough? So, so as we move on to the session to do it today, as Dr. Nalak, as Mr. Sarawood has mentioned, we would highly encourage you to engage in this constructive dialogue, providing your feedback, you know, offer your uh, critiques, so that we can work together, build a more resilient uh, uh, basin for us all because we all are in one way or another being affected by what is happening and what will be happening. Okay, so what is next? Okay, I think this is most important. Have you got connected to the Wi-Fi? Okay, so this is the Wi-Fi pass, wi pass, uh, uh, wi wi password. We want you all to, can you put up your phone and, and, and check if you are connected to, to, to the internet? And if you have not been connected yet, can you, can you connect it now? On your table, there is a small 
um, there is a, a, a small box like this with the Wi-Fi ID and Wi-Fi uh, <coughs> passcode. Can you, can you make sure that you are connected? Because we have one exercise that we'll ask you to do. All right. If you have problem um, connecting to the uh, Wi-Fi, please let us know. We have people staying um, around here. Our JRP friend, can you stay uh, uh, station? Go to your station. Anyone has a problem connecting? Okay, expert. Right. Okay, and then this one document. So you probably be wondering what are all these QR code and you know document like Q and A polls and forums um, survey. Again, I would like to inform you that um, this time around we try to use uh, more of the technology so that we can rec uh, record your, your, your question right there on the screen, this screen. So while people who are watching us um, can post the question in the comment box on live stream and then the question will also be posted on this uh, slide -offs. People here, ladies and gentlemen here in the room can also if you want to choose to answer or, or you know uh, make questions, you can raise your hand, microphone on your uh, on your table. But if you don't want to, you can choose um, this one, the live Q and A, the one in the middle. You can do that. I'll I'll do the demo right away after this. So to see where or how you can do that. And for the document, this is where you scan and receive all the document of the forum today. And then the one on the survey, we do it later. Yeah. Okay, let's do uh, the demo. All right. So here you are. So you just open your camera. Open your camera, right? So open your camera and do the, the scan. Right. Okay, so here. So this is document and this is live pool. Let's do this. Okay, so now you see I'm doing this on the screen. So just join event. Okay, now I'm joined. Okay, so on the screen on my mobile phone now, there's Q&A tab on the left, and then there's pull. So there are different times when we would ask you to do pull. But then there are times when you want to ask question, right? So you go to question here and then type your question, what your question would be. For example, what is this? What? Okay. Okay. And then there's an option to, to show your name. If you don't want to show your name, you have complete, complete right to not show it here. Right, but if you want to just show, like okay, now I'm using so here, and then you send, and then there you will go it right up there on the screen. Is that okay? Okay, there you go. But because I put my name, so my name is there. But if you chose not to put your name, then your name will not be there. In this, in much the same way, question from our uh, all the watching live on Facebook on social media will also be up there. All right. Anyone has some difficulty doing that? Okay, easy PC lemon queasy. All right. Okay, let's do this then. You remember the, the first question I asked? Why are we all here? Okay. So <clears throat> I want you all to think about just one keyword. Okay, attitude, noun, or whatever you can think of. What is your main expectation from the forum today in just one word? Okay, so type your word there. So now I'm typing my words. Okay, so, so here people have already started typing. So put one word and then it uh, uh, goes up here. So on Q and uh, on poll, type your one word there and set send. Okay.
ok Why? Have you typed in? Okay. Okay, have you done? Can you raise your hand? You have done? Okay, half of the world. And then the, this world has not done yet. Can you? Okay. Okay, so cooperation, learning is now stemming out on the big screen. Knowledge sharing. Okay, commitment. Dialogue action. Okay. I think we all have at least two. So we are here at least to learn, to share. And hopefully then their, their cooperation that are Resulting from this one, okay, maybe through constructive dialogue as well. So, so we'll come back to this one um, uh, toward the end to see whether we, we achieve this sort of expectation or not, or whether we meet your expectation or not. But, okay, you cannot achieve the level of learning you want or the, 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 the type of dialogue that you want without it changing. So you have to go meet people, um, you know, a change during the discussion. Uh, raise your hand if you have question and if you probably be, you don't want to show who you are, then type in the question in the Q&A that we just shown. So thank you so much. And okay, we'll, we'll need to move on to the next um, agenda item. Uh, and this is the launching ceremony of the MRC and LMC Water Center Joint Study. Um, so this session will be co-facilitated by um, our college from the Secretariat and another college from the LMC Water Center. Um, so here with me today, um, we have uh, Dr. Vinayes. Um, Dr. Vinayes. Oh, okay, Dr. Vinay and Dr. Saran. Could we have you on the stage, please? Okay. So here in the room, we have Dr. Vinay uh, to facilitate on the ground. And there in the LMC Water Center, we have Dr. Cheng Tong Sung. Can we have... Okay. Okay. All right. So, Doctor Vinay's um, Wang Pimul, right, is the director of the technical support division of the MRC Secretariat. He oversees work of the division and operation of the MRC Regional Flood and Drought Management Center in Phnom Penh, including on river monitoring database and information system modeling, flood and drought forecasting, and can I have the uh, picture? Can I have the chat? pictures of uh, Mr. Uh, Alam C. What is that? Yeah. Alam C. Okay. 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 A bit of technical issue, but so our moderator joining us from Beijing is Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Cheng Tong Sung. Dr. Dong Sung is the director of the Department of Training and Information Division of the LMC Water Center. He is an experienced researcher and manager with almost two decades 
of work in water resource management and environmental management. So I hope you will have a lot of information from this session as we have two experienced moderators uh, for the session. So Dr. Vinay and Dr. Um, Jung Tong Seung, the floor is yours. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Sophia. Good morning, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the session two about the uh, launching ceremony, MRC and LNC Water Center Choice Study. In title of the, the Choice Study, like the changing uh, hydrological pattern in the lower Mekong Basin and adaptation strategies. And again, uh, thank you, Sophia, for brief uh, uh, information about the Mekong, what uh, we have been uh, found the challenges. As you know, the, the Mekong River, uh, Lanshang and Mekong River is uh, still have the many challenges, uh, especially for the, the extreme climate and also the rapid development in the basins. And again, I would like to add that maybe you remember the map from the, the Super, the, the Mekong River. Uh, we have the originate in China, in the China they call the Lanchang uh, River or the up, upper uh, Mekong River and uh, make the river come down to the downstream to the four member country like the Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam we call the lower Mekong Basin. You can see the in terms of the topography is linked together from the, the upper part to the lower part. That's why there's a uh, Two parties need strong cooperation to work together. And you know, the joint study, the, the work of the joint study, this is not the first time for the joint study. In the past, we have the joint observations, like the, in 2016, if you remember, in that year, it's a dry year, and then the China from the upper part, they released the water from the Qinghong to the Dao Sin. And then uh, our team, our uh, technical team from both sides, they were working together to join observation in terms of the, the flow volume from the upstream to the downstream. And also the, in 2018, we have the working together for the joint assessments, especially for the, the flood and drought, in order to see and better understanding in the, where is the hotspot area in terms of the flood and drought in the upper and also the lower Mekong Basin. This time in 2020s, uh, we uh, working together again. Uh, we developed uh, the concept node and also the pro project proposal for the joint study in order to know the cost and impact on the changing hydrological pattern in the lower Mekong Basin. And in order to provide the, the recommendation in the short term, medium term, and long term to mitigate on on that uh, impact. This is, uh, the, I, I brief you some background on, on the joint study. And you know the, the joint study had been formulated in 2020 during the COVID pandemic. You maybe have some uh, difficulty. We cannot uh, move forward, maybe some delay. But our effort, we still working together, join together to move forward and until the, the project proposal had been agreed in the dialogue meeting uh, with the partner in the September 21. And after that, the, the next technical team had been kickstart. We have the several meeting in terms of the preparations and prepare the inception report uh, into uh, 2021. And then we bring it to consult with the member country through our mechanism we call the expert group meeting in the, the early of this year in March. And now we have the, some progress uh, and we would like to uh, inform to you as uh, today is a great opportunity to uh, inform and keep update to the public and all stakeholders to know what is a uh, Joy study, why the joy study is very important, what is the key derivable from the, the study. With this, uh, I would like to introduce uh, our team. The Professor Tian Fuxian is a 
chief the expert he is uh, from the department of hydrologic engineering the Tsinghua university from china is a co expert uh, to provide you some informations about uh, the joint study uh, i would like to invite the professor tian this is your floor tian this is your floor thank you can you hear me yes Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can you switch it to the slides? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wenlai, for the introduction. And uh, dear uh, Deputy Secretary General Office of Natural Water Resources, uh, Mr. Sarah Wu, uh, Chief Prasad. Uh, dear uh, Chief Executive Officer of MRCS, uh, Dr. Analog uh, Katie Kong, dear uh, Secretary General of Anton uh, Mekong Corporation uh, Water Center, Mr. Hao Zhao, uh, distinguished uh, participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. It's my great pleasure to introduce the uh, LMC Water Center and the MRC joined the study together with my colleague, Dr. Uh, Saren. So the title of the joint study is The Changing Patterns of Hydrological Foundations of the Lantang Mekong Rural Basin and uh, Adaptation uh, Strategies. We will introduce the project by answering a series of questions. Next, please. Next slide, please. Okay, the first question, uh, what's the joint study? So as we know, uh, the Lansang Mekong Basin is often and increasingly ex exposed to natural disasters, uh, such as the floods and the drought, uh, as we discussed uh, a lot. Uh, in the first uh, session. Also, the critical and the variable flows is important for the ecosystem and the fishery, especially in the Tony Sap Lake. So every flood, drought, and any other kinds of abnormal flow event receives a lot of attention from the public and the news media. So without uh, exceptions, both in the basin and beyond, However, different groups and different media usually point to different sources and arrive at different conclusions. For example, different studies can attribute the same drought event to different drivers, such as abnormal climate or dam operation. And some of these studies using only satellite data source and other studies use monitoring and ground data, which, however, may not cover the whole basin. So there are gaps in data and information, as well as the method they adopted. To inform the public with the right messages, uh, Lansang Mekong Corporation Water Center and the MRC Secretariat launched this joint study with input from all the stakeholders. Next, please. Next slide. So the aim of the joint study are the first to provide a better understanding on changing patterns of hydrological conditions in the Lantang Mekong River Basin. The second to provide adaptation strategies for the hydrological changes. And the third, advise all the repairing countries of potential measures to mitigate basin-wide flood and drought, exacerbated by climate change. Next, yes, thank you. The joint study will be compo comprised of three components. Component one, historical change in the hydrological conditions and the causes of these changes. Component number two, future change of the hydrological conditions under climate change and water resource development. 
Component number three, adaptation strategies for the changing hydrological conditions for sustainable development and uh, uh, of the sustainable management and the development of the Lantang Mekong River Basin. So here we will focus our attention on the three prominent uh, features of hydrological conditions. The first, uh, the natural runoff composition, means how much water we have in different periods of the time, how much water from different parts of the basin. Second, flood and drought. We discussed a lot already. There's too much water or too less water, which can cause losses of life and wealthy, destroy agriculture and aquaculture, and so on and so forth. Third, reverse flow to the Tony Sap Lake. That is the flood path between. Sorry, can you come back? Thank you. So the flood pulse between the Mekong mainstream and the lake. So during the flood season, water uh, flow from the mainstream to the lake and uh, expand the water body. And uh, during the dry season, water flows back to the mainstream. So it serves as the nature regulation uh, storage. Uh, this is uh, this flood pulse phenomenon is very important for fishery in the lake and the flood control downstream in the delta area. And the whole study will implement it in two phases. We will finish component number one in this year, 2022 as phase one, and the common component number two and three will be conducted in the, in the following two years as phase two. Okay, next please. The second question, why is the joint study important for the region? Next, please. So we know building knowledge and trust are essential for solving collective action problems. The ultimate goal of the joint study is to improve people's well-being and help achieving the sustainable development goals in the Lansang Mekong River Basin. Specifically, with this joint study, we will provide recommendations for joint actions at the river basin and the country level, which can alleviate the impact of drought and flood. We will propose short, medium, and long-term adaptive strategies, including solutions from structure and non-structure measures. In this way, the repairing countries can adapt to these changing hydrological conditions and respond better to flood and drought risks uh, across the rural basin, exacerbated by climate change. And the whole basin can enhance better sharing of data, timely notifications, and opportunities for coordination of existing water infrastructures and enhance upstream-downstream cooperation. Next, please. So the third question, who are involved in the joint study? At the top level, we have a steering committee, the Joint Working Group on Lansang Mekong Cooperation Water Resources Cooperation, and the Joint Committee on Mekong River Commission. They will provide guidance and make decisions on the joint study. Under the steering committee, we have the project management team, the LMC Water Center and the MRC Sector Secretariat. Both agencies have set up their project management office separately, but they will communicate and coordinate on the joint study constantly. So coordinated by the project management team, the technical study team is comprised of technical experts from both MRCS and the LMC Water Center, led by two chief uh, experts. To ensure research quality, the team has also invited national experts from the corresponding member countries and uh, international experts to provide consultancy. The technical team 
has worked out an exceptional report and submitted to the steering committee for the evaluation. And the committee has provided a green light to move on with the study. Okay, I will stop here and leave the remaining slides to Dr. Saran. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Dr. Wenai, I will hand over the floor back to you. Thank you, Professor Tian, uh, for your presentations. Now the, uh, the audience know the, what is the joint study, who will involve on this. And then I would like to hand over to my co-facilitator, Dr. Cheng. This is uh, your floor. Okay, thanks, uh, Dr. Wena. Distinguished uh, guests, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Tian just presented some key points of the gender study. The gender study is very important and necessary to all six relevant countries in better understanding of the hydrological conditions and providing recommendations for joint actions at the European and country level. The joint study is a joint effort by all six member countries. Um, participation in our regional stakeholders are uh, welcome uh, in this joint study. Uh, hydrological and water systems uh, simulation and analysis of water use on the mainstream and the major tributary of the Nantang Lake River will be carried out. Next, I will invite Dr. Sarah Lee to briefly introduce the data, modeling, outcomes, and the other key points of the gender study. Dr. Sarah Lee is the chief hydrologist of the MRCS. He is the new technical staff of the tech, uh, technical support division and supervised all activities and tasks to engage the tool, hydrological monitoring and studies and the associated work of information and data management. Dr. Sarni, now the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Chen. Uh, good morning, Excellency, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So again, my name is Sarani, uh, Chief Hydrology of the Mekong River Commission Secretariat. So now I, I would like to uh, resume the presentation of the joint study, which was uh, started by Professor Tian, he already introduced you uh, the what is the, the joint study, uh, what is the, the importance of the joint study, and who are involved in the, the joint study. And now I would like to uh, move on to the next question: What data and approach are being used, and it will be followed by. Uh, the dealer wall and the next step of the joint study. And the, I, I would like to uh, reiterate that uh, the objective of this joint study uh, is to investigate the, the hydrological changes in the Langkang Mekong River Basin. And therefore, we will use a hydrological water system simulation and so we will need uh, data. So uh, firstly, we need uh, hydrological data like uh, the charge water level along the mainstream from uh, Langkang Mekong uh, River and uh, the, the key uh, tributary, and as well as uh, meteorological data in the uh, whole Langkang Mekong uh, River Basin. And also we need uh, other uh, uh, data like uh, socioeconomic development, like uh, hydropower, domestic industrial water use, irrigation, like a uh, crop pattern and, and calendar uh, area of the irrigation. And we will use those uh, data to, to input into our analysis. And moreover, we will use uh, satellite product, uh, global reanalyzing data set, and those are uh, will be uh, input into our analysis and 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 modeling. And we choose uh, through SWOT and source uh, model uh, to cover hydrological modeling and water system simulation and uh, hydrodynamic either ICES or DELS3D 
or both will be further explored in the implementation of the phase two uh, from, from next year 2023 or to, to 2024. We, uh, in terms of drought analysis, we, we will use uh, satellite data or ground observation and we will uh, calculate uh, uh, the standard uh, precipitation index and uh, SPE to, to analyze the drought. So uh, the next question, what, what are the, the expected key deliverable of the joint study? So um, uh, the, the objective is to, to investigate the chain of uh, the hydrological condition in the Langkang Mekong River Basin. So we will uh, produce two reports. So the, the first one will be uh, focused on the historical change of the hydrological condition in the whole uh, Langkang Mekong River Basin. And what are the cause of the change? And then we will uh, formulate the uh, short-term adaptation strategy uh, for the uh, basin like in hand data uh, sharing, and a timely notification and uh, opportunity for the coordination of the existing hydraulic structure. And we will have uh, the second report uh, from next year. And that report we will uh, focus on the future trend of uh, hydrological condition. And then we will uh, formulate the medium and long term adaptation strategy. And um, in the report, we'll uh, contain uh, the presentation, the result of the changing pattern of the hydrological condition and using a graph and a table and map. And then you can see uh, the changing pattern. We can put- Recording uh, in progress. Uh, we can put, uh, we can select some, some timestamp. We can compare between the baseline and uh, the, the new uh, time when there's a new development or climate change even. So we can compare, we can see the change, hydrological changes uh, in uh, each station, the main station selected in the Mekong. Cannot move the slider. And so uh, in the agreeing collective and objective and, and benefit of the result of uh, the joint study is the, the first step toward a healthy mutual commitment. So active participation and uh, in the analysis and trend and cause and impacts uh, will uh, contribute to the, the mutual uh, commitment and transparency and clear communication uh, will uh, gain uh, clarity and understanding and then uh, it will uh, strengthen the trust between uh, each party and the trustful uh, relationship increase uh, ownership and of result and recommendation of the joint study and joint success uh, promote the recommendation of the joint study and take uh, immediate action and therefore uh, we will have a shared knowledge platform where data information model and knowledge can be exchanged to address machine by flood and drought risk. So uh, I would like to move to the next step. What, what is the next step of the joint study? Uh, after the, the proposal we, we, uh, has been approved by uh, our joint committee, I mean, MRC joint committee, and then we uh, have uh, kickstart uh, the project, the study, by uh, conducting a lot of meeting, uh, a lot of exchange conversation with uh, LMC Water Center. We start uh, since, since January, and uh, then we uh, compose the inception report, and uh, we we have consulted with the expert group meeting, expert group uh, that that was a special meeting. Uh, combine of the expert from the third country and then today we uh, launch these projects so uh, next step we will uh, continue to develop model to do the joint analysis and a chain uh, with the LMC water center 
and then we will uh, write the first technical report in uh, October or September, and then we will have uh, uh, to conduct the series of consultation with experts, and we share the outcome of the, the joint research report uh, consultation with the stakeholder, and of course we will disseminate the technical report through the multi-stakeholder workshop. That is, uh, uh, we hope that we will uh, give. Uh, we will receive more input from the stakeholder. So, uh, thank you very much, and uh, I would like to uh, hand over to Dr. Chen. Okay, thanks, Dr. Jeremy. Uh, next, I will invite Dr. Munai to take the floor to moderate the open discussion. Dr. Munai, please. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Dr. Chen, now is time for the open the floor for the uh, discussion to, to hear the, the questions and also the recommend from the, the audience. Before the open the discussion, I would like to suggest uh, for the uh, participant in here before you uh, ask the question, should introduce yourself and organization and follow by the, the questions. And also, the, the we welcome the, the question from the online as uh, our colleague already introduced your slide and also that some chat box. You can type in as at the time you we have the limited of time maybe our team cannot respond all yes, I would like to inform you that uh, we will collect all comment and question from you and provide uh, respond to you later uh, through the, the forum report don't don't worry you can ask questions okay then I would like to open the floor to get the questions from the audience please uh, maybe we open the two rounds of the, the question, uh, the first round, maybe one or two questions, uh, plus uh, one or two, two questions from online. Any questions? It seems that our team uh, present is very short and sharp and clear for, for you all in order to know the, what is the choice study and what the the expect the output and outcome. If none from here, I got the one question uh, online uh, from the online, and then I would like to invite uh, Mr. Funny uh, for your comment and the questions. The Mr. Funny is your floor. Yes, I'm. I'm here, uh, Professor Winner. I hope you can hear me. So, should I uh, uh, convey my co comments and reflection now? <laughs> Professor Winay? You can provide uh, comment uh, now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me. Hi, my name is uh, Fani Wedawitama. I'm uh, usually called Fani. I'm the regional coordinator for Global Water Partnership Southeast Asia. Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to participate in this important event. Uh, we are very much honored on this. Uh, and congratulations on Lancang Mekong Water Resources Cooperation Center and Mekong River Commission Secretariat on this important joint study. We hope this uh, can solidify uh, the partnership to improve the implementation of integrated water resource uh, management and ignite water, leaders, uh, water stewardship leadership in the Lanchang Mekong River Basin. Now, since time is very limited, allow me to share only three reflections for now of this uh, uh, inception report of the joint study. Now, so the first one uh, would be on the on the component one and on component two. Uh, we think that it should be followed up with a comprehensive water-related risk assessment of Lanchang Mekong River Basin because we know uh, when we are talking about water risk, uh, water related risk, this is not only about flood and drought, but there are many other type of risk, uh, economic risk, reputational risk, physical risk, and so on. So when we do this uh, comprehensive water related risk assessment, uh, the priority should be in identifying the uh, shared water challenges and uh, water risk. As this shared risk are the ones that brings everyone to come together and join forces. 
So risk move everyone, but also provides opportunity to work together. Now, GWP Southeast Asia, of course, uh, because we are a partnership organization, we will be able also to help to the, for the stakeholder engagement uh, processes uh, in identifying these shared water challenges and risk. So we are ready to contribute if uh, it is, this is uh, needed yeah, uh, and allowed. And then the second point uh, of my reflection is uh, regarding the shared risk information. So based on shared risk information, it would be also beneficial to come up with a section on understanding risk. Here, it is important to identify who are the target audience that critical to understand this risk and can inform and influence decision makers to address the risk, this risk. So that is the second reflection. And then the last reflection uh, from our side is that aside from the adaptation uh, strategies under the component three, it would be also important, we think, yeah, to develop mitigation strategy, emergency response strategy, and recovery and build back better strategy. All this uh, can be encapsulated uh, under uh, or within a resilience Lanchang Mekong Reparation strategy. So these are the three reflections from us. And again, congratulations to both organizations. We are here also to, to support uh, the joint study. Thank you very much. I hand over back to Dr. Cheng or Professor Winai, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Fani, for your uh, suggestion and the questions. Maybe I would like to invite uh, Dr. Salan or Professor Tian to respond. Uh, we, uh, like we have the, some issue, the three issues like the risk assessment, talking about the data sharing and also the adaptation strategies. Then maybe start from the Dr. Salan first and then uh, following by the Professor Tian. Thank, thank you, Mr. Fani, uh, for for your uh, very good comment to our joint study. So uh, you have raised uh, about the risk assessment and uh, how to un understand the risk and uh, how to, to support the joint study. So uh, MRCS, uh, I mean MRC and, and Water uh, Center will, will work together to, to explore the risk uh, of the joint study. So we, we have uh, identified uh, some point uh, that uh, can have uh, the risk to, to this joint study, like uh, if uh, uh, there's a COVID situation and we cannot travel, so uh, we will try to uh, uh, work uh, online, to have meeting online together. And like uh, other risks, like uh, uh, if uh, in the methodology or the result that come up and they cannot uh, agree each other, so we try to uh, negotiate to talk uh, together and in, in terms of uh, we, we need to follow the, the principle of the cooperation uh, between uh, the two uh, parties. I, I think maybe Professor Tien can, can add something more about that uh, comment. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Fani, for your comments and questions. Uh, I agree with uh, Dr. Saren, uh, yeah, with, with his uh, response. So, uh, with our limited time uh, and resources, uh, so at this day, in this project, uh, we will focus on uh, the, the, the emergent, uh, urgent issues, flood, drought, and uh, also the, the flood uh, uh, post issue uh, associated with the Tony Stab Lake. So uh, personally, I acknowledge that uh, we have uh, other issues to be addressed, uh, such as the sediment, uh, fishery, ecosystem, uh, the delta, uh, the salty intrusion issue. So I, I hope we, we can uh, yeah, yeah, we, we can address uh, uh, them step by step uh, in, in the following, uh, with, with the following support from uh, uh, RMC and uh, the MRC. And uh, yeah, for the data sharing, uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Sarah uh, has also talked about that. Uh, 
with the slides uh, we we had um, uh, policies to share the data, uh, share the information, uh, of course, share the the, the, the knowledge that we uh, achieved uh, uh, in this joint study. So we will deliver uh, uh, timely in to to the public and to the stakeholders in various. Uh, Forms like uh, this uh, uh, regional forum and also uh, yeah just, uh, in other forms uh, uh, maybe the, the report and yes uh, yeah this is my uh, response uh, thank you very much okay thank you for visit Tians and then I would like to hand over to my like to moderator, Dr. Chen. Dr. Chen. Yes, thank you, Dr. Rubana. Hello, participants. Uh, I'm very interested in the study. I have any questions for this team. Now, I uh, want to invite uh, Mr. Mark uh, Dubers uh, for questions and comments. Uh, Mark is the International Water Management Institute reference for laws and the Sika Water System Lead. He is also in the reference in Southeast Asia. Mr. Mark, please. Uh, good morning. Many thanks. I, I hope you can hear me. Um, excellencies, distinguished guests, uh, it's my pleasure to be invited to speak briefly uh, this morning. I also like my colleague Fanny, have three quick points to discuss. Uh, but I would first like to congratulate the organizers and also the parties on this initiative and the joint study, which I think is an important step in these collaborations. So as you've heard, my name is Marc Dubois, and I'm the IMI representative, the International Water Management Institute representative for Laos and for Southeast Asia. Um, and whilst I'm unable to join you today, it's great to see uh, all of you, some friends and colleagues in, in physically together, um, which, which uh, it's been too long. So um, let me just say uh, in very brief terms, we know things are changing. Demand on um, the Lankan Mekong resources, both land and water resources um, are increasing, and this will continue with increased population growth and food requirements um, alongside this increasing pressure on water resources and um, their demand will increase alongside the geographic disparities in availability. And as we know, climate change will add to this complexity. We already are seeing climate change uh, impacts in this region and this will only continue. So I believe that this joint uh, MRCS LMC study is extremely timely and an excellent opportunity to understand the changing patterns of the hydrological conditions in the basin. Um, whilst the study focuses on the on the uh, Lankang Mekong River Basin, it seems to me that perhaps the attention is primarily on the rivers. This may be uh, my interpretation, but less on the broader landscape and the changes in land use and corresponding increased demands on groundwater. So one of my recommendations would, would be to um, look at opportunities to broaden these efforts to respond to increasing flood and, and drought risks across the basin by incorporating groundwater more explicitly, given the stresses on the system due to climate change, growing water withdrawal, withdrawals and increasing regulation of flows. And I think this would help to address the objective of providing a better understanding and adaptation strategies for these hydrological changes. Um, based upon the many good points in the, in the joint study document, I would also, as a second uh, recommendation, if you like, for want of, be of a better word, to encourage sort of non-technical as well as technical solutions. For example, through continued stakeholder engagement in the discussions and decisions um, around which resources management are made. And for the BDP, for example, is a good example 
of these uh, broader stakeholder engagements. And this will allow us to enhance the equitable distribution of these benefits. And along with GWP, IMI is also very happy and, and ready to support this initiative should it be of interest going forward. Finally, my third point, alongside this, I'm encouraged to see the emphasis on nature-based solutions as uh, referred to in component three of the report. And I believe that ongoing collaborations that IMI has and other stakeholders have already with regional governments, such as um, managed aquifer recharge with MARD in the central highlands of Vietnam and groundwater assessment, assessment and management in Sekong Basin in Laos with, with Monray can assist in understanding and crucially managing the changing patterns of hydrological conditions of the Lankang Mekong River Basin. So in conclusion, I'd like to again congratulate the joint parties and express the International Water Management Institute's continued support to the region. And we look forward to picking up our engagement with the joint parties to enhance water security in the Lankang Mekong. Thank you very much, and I look forward to the continued deliberations throughout the day. Thank you, Mr. Minister Mark. My brother Jen and Dr. Sunny, could you give a quick response to Dr. Sunny's comments? Professor Jen, please. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can okay. hear you well. Okay, okay. Well. yeah. yeah thank, thank you, uh, the Prince uh, from Amy. Uh, uh, yes, uh, the very good uh, recommendations uh, and advice. So I know uh, you, uh, Amy and uh, also GWP had a lot of experience, the research experience and the practical experience. Uh, 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 in this basin, Lansang Mekong, and also around the world. So uh, your experience definitely will benefit our joint study. Uh, your suggestions on the nature-based solution uh, on uh, climate change, um, other uh, uh, aspects, uh, or we will keep a uh, in mind and. Uh, reflect in our uh, following works. So uh, one point I uh, want to explain to you is uh, about the, 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 the land part uh, role uh, in our study. Uh, yes, we, we focus on the river, uh, focus on the flood, drought, and the, 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 the Tony Sub uh, Lake, uh, the reverse flow. Uh, uh, but still, we, we, we consider, uh, we, we will consider, we have considered the, the land part of the, uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, of the whole hydrological process. Uh, we, uh, we, we have the plan to collect uh, the water uh, use, uh, water consumption data, and uh, land use, land cover change. Uh, data set. So yes, we will consider uh, these uh, points, these things, uh, in into our uh, assessment into our from the study. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, very useful uh, suggestions. Thanks again, okay. uh, Dr. Chen. Okay, thank you, Mr. Professor Chen. Hello, Dr. Sun. Yes, um, um, thank, thank, thank you uh, for, for your uh, comment and recommendation. So we, we all agree for, for your recommendation and appreciate. Um, so we, we ensure that uh, we will uh, work closely with, with all stakeholders to, to address all impact due to the hydrological condi condition change. And we will, of course, establish uh, the tangible uh, strategy and recommendation after we got the, the result of the impact. So I, I think uh, CO want to add, please sit. Yeah, thank you. CO, please. Thank you, uh, Dr. Vinay, Dr. Saran, Professor Tian, Dr. Chan. Uh, 
um, I see a lot of questions on the board. So uh, I'm going to help the team answer as many as I can. Um, I think the, um, this forum is a first step in engaging the broader stakeholders in this very important joint study. So um, we know that there's a lot of questions about uh, making sure that the study is transparent, that is quality assured. Um, so we have designed a process where there's you know, extensive consultation among the technical teams. Uh, both the MRCS team, uh, we view ourselves as very independent. And uh, with the center team, uh, who are also professional, uh, and then when we, you know, in the course of the study, we will also consult with the member countries experts. So that bring added um, uh, quality assurance, uh, etc., to the study. But in the end, it is really an MRC LMC joint study uh, with its advantages, which is uh, for the first time we are doing this together in a joint way. Um, but of, of course, you know, it, it, it may not have, um, say, external uh, experts to be uh, extensively involved. But rest assured that uh, we will periodically put out all of the products, the reports, and when they are finalized, um, I think external uh, experts are welcome to review them and criticize them. Um, and we can have a dialogue on, on, on that. Now, also very important questions raised about the involvement of, uh, of stakeholders, especially on the social issues. And I think good recommendation about involving social scientists uh, to understand uh, how the changing regime affects the people along the basin and their living condition, etc. So I think this is a, a, an early conversation. And then we will design uh, as going forward, I think with our, with our Chinese friends as well, how to bring in uh, the experiences of the communities. Especially, I think, very important when we design the adaptation measures. Because I'm thinking that by the end of the year, we should have actionable recommendations in both to deal with this, um, you know, changing flows, but also maybe the operation of water infrastructure projects, the adaptation measures uh, that the communities uh, should be aware. Uh, and I think these are important to get insights and lessons from the from the vulnerable communities. So I think going forward, uh, definitely we will design some engagement uh, and on on this. Um, how how is this different? For example, there was a question on how is this different from the past council study or joint study in the past. Now the council study it's it's very important, but it's 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 basically a four country study, right? So. Component two, which is looking at these future trends um, and etc., uh, I think for the first time we'll bring the six countries together, and this is already a new thing. Um, so, so we are hoping that the component two uh, in 2023-24 will be tied also to the MRC work on proactive regional planning. Uh, which we uh, which we will communicate, I think, and get with, with stakeholders in another time, uh, another set of very important study. And if you look at, there was also questions about, okay, you, you do a study, you do recommendation, will they be adopted? I think this is a very important question. And I believe that um, because this joint study was adopted or approved to be done under both the MRC uh, framework, and the LMC framework. So all the six countries jointly own this study. So whatever comes out, they have to consider very seriously. You know, it's not just a study uh, by a group of uh, think tanks or a group of researchers or a company. It's really a, a, a study that is designed to be extensively engaged with the governments of the six countries and drawing inputs from experts, from, from CSO. So I really believe that uh, whatever we adopt or, or whatever we recommend at the end of the study will be seriously considered uh, for adoption. And then 
finally, I think um, there will be a knowledge sharing platform uh, at the end. And I think this will be publicly available. And we will, I think we hear you on the uh, translation into uh, Liberian languages. So um, I think this at the end would, would be freely and publicly available. So thank you very much. I think it's, it's a good conversation. It's, it's a start, a lot of inputs for us to think about. And um, we will ensure that we continue to engage you uh, throughout. Thank you. Thank you, CEO, for your provide response to the, the almost. Uh, I saw. I also saw the question from from the online. You already provide response, and also the summary what uh, what we try to do and uh, the move forward. Uh, I know. I don't repeat again, and maybe be because of the time limited time. Again, I would like to thank you the joint study team uh, from the the MC Water Center and also the Embassy Secretariat. And thank you for the participant for listening to keep the update information from our uh, secret and looking forward to have you to join in the next forum. Uh, with this, I would like to thank you again and would like to hand over back to the Sophia for the uh, next sessions. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry, uh, Dr. Nguyen Lai, can yeah. I uh, just add a few uh, words? Okay, yes, please. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Amalak. Thank you very much for your uh, very uh, kindly and uh, considerate explanation and remarks upon uh, those questions. You know that I really envoy your role because you, you are on the spot. You can see all the questions, which, uh, you know, that virtually that's the backwards of the virtually uh, participation. Anyway, I think you have made very excellent explanation about the functions and the roles uh, of this joint study. And uh, what I can say that, just as I have mentioned, that we really, really want the input from all the member countries so that we can really have uh, your wisdom, um, your answers, and your proposals for the solutions. So that's the, I, I think according to the research plan, we are going to have our, uh, by the end of the year, uh, we are going to have a stakeholder uh, conference or seminar, which we will disseminate um, the, the, this year's research outcome. By that time, we can definitely uh, will invite um, all the uh, stakeholders uh, to be involved and to give your comments, just as uh, Dr. Anglov has mentioned. Definitely, uh, MMC, Water Center, and MRCS, we will uh, join in design and organize this. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Hao Chao, for your additional information. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Vinais and Dr. Zheng Dongsheng for the moderation, as well as Dr. Zaran and Professor Fu Jian for the presentation. I know there's a lot of questions out there. Um, we still have a couple more. But rest assured that we'll, 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 we will address those in the forum report as we move forward. So Dr. Vinay, Dr. Saran, and our team joining from Beijing, thank you so much. Maybe a round of applause for them, please. Thank you. OK, so what is next is coffee break, right? Coffee and tea break. So uh, we are running 10 minutes late. So we'll come back to the room at 10.40 AM. And the coffee break is outside of the room. So please enjoy yourself and then we'll collect everybody back to the room. Please don't go home yet. We'll still have more exciting session. Thank you so much. <laughs>